Hey guys, Becky here, Five Two Baker. Welcome back. This week we are working on these big, beautiful sugar peonies. I love them so much and it's taken me such a long time to figure out how to get them exactly how I want and I finally have, so I'm super psyched to share it with you guys. It's nothing super complicated. It's just a little bit time consuming as are all cake related things. So let's get right to it. So we're going to start off by taking our one inch styrofoam ball and cutting it right down the middle so we have two equal parts. We're only going to use one side though. With your carrier wire, which should be at least an 18 gauge because this is a very heavy flower, go ahead and poke a hole through the rounded end. Take your carrier wire, make a hook in it, put some hot glue on that hook and then pop it right into the hole that you just made on the styrofoam. Then you just carefully wipe off any excess glue you don't want to burn yourself and let it dry for a minute or two. Once your hot glue is dry, go ahead and bring that back along with some green gum paste and add some edible glue to the flat top of the styrofoam. Grab a little bit of green gum paste, roll it out really thin, and then put it on the top to cover that white styrofoam. This way, if you look at the center of your flower, you won't see any styrofoam, you'll only see green. Press it down into place and take off any excess. And then with the rest of your gum paste, we're going to finish working on this center. Go ahead and roll out anywhere from three to six little balls. You take each of those little balls, you taper it into a teardrop shape, and then on the thin end, give it a little tug and a squeeze to flatten it. And you want this to be about a half inch in height so that in total, your center is about an inch tall. Once you're happy with your centers, go ahead and add some edible glue to the flat side of your styrofoam where the green now is and place your little teardrop shapes on it however you like. And once you're happy with the placement, go ahead and set it off to the side to dry. Now that your green center is dry, we're going to go ahead and add some color to it using color dust. I like to use a bright red and I add a little bit to the tips of my center. I make sure to dust the front and the back of each tip and then any extra red that I have, I just fade it away towards the bottom. For the bottom of these, I will add a darker shade of green than what my gum paste is, and then I will drag the remaining green color dust that is on it to the top so that it fades away. This way from bottom to top, I'm going from a dark green, faded, light green, a faded red, and then a dark red tip. Once you're all done dusting this, go ahead and put it to the side for just a minute. To attach the stamens to our centers, we're going to use some gum paste. So go ahead and grab your gum paste and roll it and flatten it out into a shape that resembles a piece of tape. So you want it thin and long. Once you have that, go ahead and put some edible glue all across the top. And for this center, I'm only going to use two bundles of peonies because my peony stamens are double-ended. I'll take each of those two peony bundles, I'll cut them in half, take the little piece of tape off the center so that each stamen is loose, and I'll lay it against this piece of tape. You want to press them down so that they stick on there really well, and once you have them all lined up, go ahead and take the rest of your gum paste slice of tape there and fold it right over the top so that your stamen are covered front and back. The next thing you do is you grab your styrofoam center and put some edible glue all around the styrofoam end because that is where we will be gluing this. Then take your little piece of tape and line it up only against the styrofoam and wrap it all the way around. If you have any excess, that's fine. I just go ahead and use the excess to fill in any sparse areas. 
and then I make sure to pat the gum paste tape all the way down and around so it fits nicely and it's a nice round shape at the bottom. You can use more or less stamen if you like, but I thought two bundles that are double headed was a perfect amount for a one inch center. Once you're all done with that, go ahead and set it off to the side to dry. Now that we're going to make the petals, these are the molds that I'll be drying my petals on. They're the same molds that people have been using for hot cocoa bombs. I think that they are the perfect shape to get that round peony shape, but you can use anything you have laying around. For cutters, I'll link the cutter set and veiner set that I'm using down below, but I'm only using the three largest cutters because my paste tends to shrink. So definitely adjust accordingly if your paste does not have any shrinkage. Now that we're getting into the petals, this is the plan that I am following for this tutorial. Feel free to add more or take away and have less petals. For the small cutter that I showed you, I will be stamping out 12 petals. Five of those I'll leave whole and seven I will be cutting in half to have half petals. For the medium cutter, I will be stamping out 10 and leaving them all whole. And for the large cutter, I will be stamping out eight, leaving four whole and cutting four of them in half. This is to give my petals variety in shape and size and so that everything isn't as heavy and I still have a light fluffy flower. I also recommend working in sections, so do the small petals first, let those dry up once you glue them on your flower, do the medium petals next, let those dry up as your flower dries, and then do your large petals, add those to your flower, and then let those dry up. Here are my small petals, and when I say I cut them in half, I mean lengthwise, so this is what they should look like. Then once I have everything stamped out and cut in half, I go ahead and take each petal and I give it a little more variety by adding extra slits, a little more wave, and I do those things just because all my cutters look the same and so I don't want my flower to look too cookie cutter. There are cutters out there that you can buy, but I don't make peonies as often as I'd like. So embroidery scissors do the job just fine for me. I go ahead and do this cutting of the slits and the waves, all that variety for all of my small petals, my medium, and my large. Once I'm all done with my cutting, I go ahead and bring out my veiner, give it a little dust of cornstarch so that my petals do not stick, and then I just pop them right in and I give them a gentle push because this veiner is a little sharper with its veins, so you can cut right through if you're not careful. I go ahead and pop it out of the veiner and then at the base of the petal I will cut a little slit so that these slits can fold over each other and create more of an arch shape as it dries. Pop it onto my little silicone mold and let it dry. I go ahead and this is the same process that I follow for all of my small, medium, and large petals. Now once I've veined out a few petals, the next thing that I'm going to do is as they're drying before they dry fully, once they're just a little bit firm, I take each petal and I put it on the palm of my hand and using the rolling ball tool, I go from the outer edge towards the inside just a little bit to give it a little more of a round shape so that it cups a little bit more and again, it looks a little more alive and has more movement. I don't do this for each and every petal, but I just do it for some in each size so that I have some variety. Now while I did recommend to go ahead and work in phases and do all your small petals, get those glued on, then do all your medium petals, get them glued on, and then do all your large petals, and then get those glued on, I felt a little ambitious so I went ahead and did all my petals at once and now I'm going to glue them all at once. When I do this, I go ahead and line up all my petals by shape and size, so my smallest halves are together, then my small whole petals. 
my medium hole petals are together, then I have my half large petals and my half whole petal because this is the order that they will go on when I glue my flower. Now the last thing that we're gonna do before they go onto our center is to make sure to glue them closed, so those little slits that we cut, and to also glue them in clusters. So I don't like arranging my peony petals one by one onto the center because then my petals look like they're lined up like nice rows of little soldiers and I want it to be a little more random than that so this helps me. What I do is by size I will start with the small half petals and I will group them in pairs of twos or threes and I want them to be slightly angled so that they look like little angel wings. I'll also leave some off on their own to act as fillers or in case there's a space that just needs a little petal. Or I'll also attach some of them to the small whole petals or the whole medium petals. Again, these small petals are to add variety and just make the flower look full without adding as much weight by having whole entire petals on there. Once all my small petals are glued and taken care of, I move on to my medium, and my medium ones just kind of stay by themselves. I just make sure to glue together the two slits so that they maintain a nice round shape. And then when I get to my large petals, I'm doing the same process I did with my small petals. I'll glue some of the large half petals together so that they have that wing shape. I'll attach some to the large whole petals and some I will leave on their own in case I just need a half petal. There's not really a way to mess this step up unless you go mixing the smalls with the very larges and all that. So as long as you stay within size, any which combination you choose to do is probably going to look good. My petals are all set up and ready I go ahead and bring back my center and starting with the smallest half petals that I have I go ahead and glue them on I don't glue it starting at the very base of my center so I don't start closest to the wire I just go ahead and align it based on how I want it to look visually so I want my petals to sort of hug the center so it looks like it's still opening it's not fully opened so that is how i'm deciding to align them at first now the larger your petals go the further down your center and closer to your wire it will naturally go so that you retain the round shape so don't worry about the exposed bottom of the center at the moment I start off with three groups bunched in the center and after that, the only rule that I follow is making sure that I don't have open gaps. So I go around it over and over again, occasionally checking by looking at it to make sure that I don't have gaps and that everything is looking just fine. I'll continue to add petals by size, working from the smallest all the way to the largest. And I'll stop probably about halfway through, just so that the glue that I'm adding to my center and on the petals has time to dry. I don't want the weight of everything to start to move all my petals off of the center. So I give it some time in between to dry and then I add the rest of my petals. This is also why I recommend working in phases, doing your small petals, then your medium, then your large, because then you don't risk your petals firming up too hard 
while you're waiting for your smaller petals to set up on the center of your flower. Hopefully that makes sense. Now once I'm near the end of my petal count here, the last three, maybe four petals that I have, which are the largest, I'll go ahead and instead of placing them on my flower where they are cupping towards the center, I put them upside down so that it looks like they are opening out. These are the petals that have been on there the longest and so they are starting to just completely open up and wither away. That's the effect I'm going for. You don't have to do it. You can keep them all cupped towards the center, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous to add that opening effect to my flower. Once I'm all done, I go ahead and put this to dry. I like to dry my flowers upside down so that the weight of the petals doesn't collapse them all open and destroy my work. And then you're all done. Here goes some of my peonies all dried. I didn't use any color dust, but you can if you like, and you can do that after it's assembled. If you find that your petals are sticking together as they're drying because of the weight, feel free to use little strips of paper towel and then tuck them in between the petals before they dry so they dry with that spacer. And then once your petals are all dry, go ahead and pull that carefully out and your petals should be nicely spaced so that you don't have a clump of a flower and it looks all nice and fluffy. All right, guys, here they go again. They're so big and pretty. As always, if you found this tutorial helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already. I would super appreciate that. And if you have any questions or comments, please do drop them down below. I would love to hear from you guys. If not, I will see you guys later.